Hi guys, welcome to Osmo Regulation. In terms of the specification, we need to be able to know the role of the hypothalamus, poster uh, posterior pituitary gland and ADH hormones in the Osmo Regulation. We need to know, of course, the structure of the nephron and the processes that are taking place in each of those uh, parts of the structure. So let's get started. This is the structure of the kidney. As per specification, we don't need to know it all. But what's really important, obviously, it's a nephrod, a single unit. It's a cortex, so the light layer here. Then around, we've got fibrous capsule. And uh, inside, we've got pelvis. And those pyramids looking like uh, structures are called medulla. So what's important for us, it's actually nephron, cortex, and medulla. That would be useful for later on. And this is the single unit nephron that we will be looking at. So uh, this is a nephron, and you do need you need to know the structure of the nephron, of course. So we're starting with the arteriolis. We've got afferent coming in, afferent coming out. We've got glomerular capillaries, so the capillaries inside of the renal capsule, both my capsule. We then have the first convoluted tubule, which is called proximal convoluted tubule. That will then uh, lead to the loop of Handley, which is divided into descending limb going down and ascending limb going up. That will then join with another proximal, uh, another sorry, uh, convoluted tubule, which is called distal convoluted tubule, leading to the collecting duct. So make sure you know the structure of the nephron. So let's get started now with the processes that are taking place in each of those parts. So first we had renal capsule where the ultra filtration is taking place. So as we mentioned, we were looking at the uh, afferent arteriole and the uh, afferent arteriole. So afferent coming in, afferent coming out. Glomerulus, okay, so the capillaries inside of the uh, renal capsule and the really important things are podocytes. So those cells here that are making the basement membrane. What's the ultrafiltration? So it's a production of the glomerular filtrate. How does it take place? So at the end of the afferent arteriole, we've got high hydrostatic pressure. And this is going to, uh, to lead to the formation of the, uh, of the filtrate. So what happens exactly the same as with the production of the tissue fluid all the small molecules like glucose like amino acids uh, like water are going to squeeze through the podocytes in between the podocyte cells producing the glomerular filtrate the big proteins are going to stay in the uh, glomerular uh, capillaries because they are too big to pass through so, of course, what they're going to cause, they're going to change uh, the water potential in the uh, capillaries. So, we'll be here now, uh, obviously, need uh, here we will need the osmosis of water to take place. So, what more water will be then uh, coming back to the glomerular capillaries. Okay, so remember, in the uh, glomerular filtrate, we've got small molecules like glucose, amino acids, urea, and the big proteins are too big to pass through, so they're staying in. So next process, after renew capsule, we've got proximal convoluted tubule where reabsorption of glucose and water is taking place. The adaptations for this process are many blood capillaries. The PCT is made of the epithelial cells, which we've got here. And the process of reabsorption of glucose, it's nothing else than cord transport that you've learned about in the, in the first year again. So what happens here? So imagine we're working now in the PCT and uh, with the blood capillaries. So first thing, okay, we've got the active transport of sodium ions from the epithelial cell of proximal convoluted tubule to the blood capillaries. This will uh, maintain the concentration gradient inside of the uh, proximal convoluted tubule. So what will happen next? From the lumen of proximal convoluted tubule, sodium ions are going to diffuse inside of the uh, epithelial cell, bringing along the glucose. So 
Now we've got a high concentration of glucose thanks to the scorch transport. So if here we've got high concentration of glucose lower in the blood, of course, glucose will be now the, uh, transported to the blood capillary by facilitated diffusion. So that's reabsorption of glucose. But what happens in here now, we of course now got lots of glucose and lots of sodium ions in the blood capillary. So the water potential in the blood capillary is lower than in the epithelial cell of proximal convoluted tubule. So osmosis of water is taking place from the epithelial cell of proximal convoluted tubule to the uh, capillaries. And this is because of the high concentration of sodium ions and glucose. So next process after uh, reabsorption is leading to the maintenance of water and ions in the loop of Henle. So loop of Henle, okay, what do we need to remember? We've got two limbs. We've got descending limb going down and ascending limb going up. So uh, ascending limb, okay, it's impermeable to water. So what does that actually mean? That means that water can come only in, okay? But descending limb is permeable to water. So in here, water can come in and also can come out. So let's have a look now at the sodium ions. So the information we've got provided here is that ascending limb is permeable to sodium ions. So what they can do, they can come in and out, okay, in that direction here as well. But what they can do in terms of the distal convoluted tubule, because this is impermeable to sodium ions, they can only come in. So as you can see, the maintenance of the uh, concentration here will be taking place through the whole length of this loop of Henle, of those limbs, because when the sodium ions will be actively transported out, to the interstitial space, so the space in between the limbs, they're going to increase the concentration of sodium ions in the medulla. Okay, so how can we then deal with this increase of sodium ions and decrease water potential? We can use the fact that descending limb it's uh, it's permeable to water, so the water come out, and that will then uh, deal with this lower water potential, maintaining the concentration gradient here. Okay, so remember the uh, renal capsule and proximal convoluted tubule were in the cortex, but the loop of Henle is in medulla. So that's the maintenance of water and ions. And the final thing here that we will be looking at is a distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct. So what happens in those, it's the further reabsorption of water that both are made of epithelial tissues. So here remember the sodium ions could come out. So sodium ions are increasing their concentration in the cortex. So they're doing that across the whole length. So this is like counter current, same as we were looking at this in first year when we were studying fish. So high concentration of sodium ions here means lower water potential in medulla. How can we overcome this? Two things. The, there will be higher water potential in the distal convoluted tube. So the osmosis can take place from the cortex to the medulla, but also the collecting duct can help out. So how can we reabsorb water from the collecting duct back to the blood vessels? It's thanks to the hormone ADH. So if you are dehydrated, if the concentration of the sodium ions is high here, ADH will be released through the uh, pituitary gland. So hypothalamus has the osmoreceptors that are going to tell us that we are dehydrated, okay? Because the cells, the osmoreceptors are going to shrink. They will contact the gland and secrete ADH. ADH makes this membrane more permeable to water by uh, producing aquaporin. So those are the channel proteins within the membrane that will allow the reabsorption of water. Okay.
So uh, this is everything about the uh, reabsorption.